Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cougar City Podcast. This is podcast number two, featuring myself, Cougars Bay, JPY248. We have MFQ Genocide, Bob and Weaving 11. And then we're going to bring back Bolt because we loved him so much last week. Or, well, not last week, but the last podcast. We're going to bring him back. Hey, everybody. Say hi to everybody out there listening. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> good to be I, back thank you yeah now we finally have jp back so it's good um you know he had some stuff to deal with but we got bolt in uh in that yeah, spot yeah it's it's great to have you back man like we really enjoyed uh your feedback in the last podcast so it's nice to have uh have you back and just so everybody that's listening knows that we will have special guests from time to time coming into the podcast and kind of giving their own, you know, feedback, their own, um, I guess, mind state of the topics that we're going to have here. Uh, speaking of topics, we are going to start with Tales of Tribute. We talked about a little bit about Tales of Tribute last time in the podcast, but as everybody knows, there's new strategies, newer people are playing the decks, and well... <laughs> Let's just get right into it with uh, Bolt and JP, who have the most experience out of this. Okay, guys. Well, I, well, I think, think it's like after, after a few weeks, weeks people, people are starting to understand, understand deck more, actually unlock, unlock more, more decks, because some, some of them you have to do questing, questing for and get pretty, pretty far, far into it. it. So the matches match are getting very intense. I've been really enjoying, enjoying the ranks and, and climbing up and then getting dropped down and climbing up a lot. You get to come come across across a lot of different different people people with different different ideas of how they play the game. And it's it's really opened it up, up, even up up for me. Like Like you have have a certain type of way you play, play, but sometimes the tavern doesn't play that that quite way. And you got to adapt to it. And yeah, sometimes you just come across freaking people who are just crazy. They get lucky. And sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes it's all... In the, the drawer, drawer of the tavern, and and, and I've had, had some crazy, crazy games myself. I'm sure JP over there's had, had some crazy, crazy games as well. And him and I, I play, play very, very much the same, but we use different decks, decks different play styles, styles as well. For real, you know. So, well, speaking of uh, playing the tavern, bolt, I would say uh, master the Sigic deck. deck. That would be my uh, best advice to anybody out there because you're allowed to play the tavern. You can deny your opponent's tavern plays. And it pretty much splashes with any deck. Um, Gold gain is good. Um, It lacks a little bit of power, but power can be supplemented from the green deck or the red deck down the road. Um, Combos really well with crow deck. Um, I feel feel like like it it leaves your options open. And um, the power power of it is actually denying your opponent. opponent. It can, can also play, play off, off the top of the tavern, tavern as well. well. Um, I, I find, find it quite, quite enjoyable. It's usually, usually always my uh, my pick, pick one. one. Every time, Every time I come across someone who plays Sigic, I know I'm in for a battle. Because yeah. It pretty much yeah. becomes a tavern battle and you're like, oh, not a lot of people know the strength of Sigic, to be honest. And even I've like, someone's played it and I've played it like against them and I've played it better than they have. But I'm not going to lie, I was scared. As soon as someone picks a jig, I'm like, okay, this person knows how to play Tales pretty obviously. But yeah, like I usually play, I like to play the gold game and then the green. So Grandmasters and the green deck. Because gold is like Grandmasters thing. And you can snowball really quick with that. And you can control the tavern by just having a lot of income. And then you get your power through the green cards and you can just... Pretty much create, create two death, two, two hands, hands, and just keep cycling them through. But if you have someone with Sigic, they don't. Most of the time, they won't let you even get a good card on the board. And the starting in that game in Tails is the, is the strongest bit. Like when I first started, I thought the start of it was slow and kind of boring. But the first three, first three cards that you can get on the tavern create like you can snowball so quickly with that, or you can screw yourself. Like, like they, they are very, very important, important to get. get. So, so understanding, understanding what, what your person, like, like the other player you're playing, is trying to do, and what you're trying to do. And yeah, it takes yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, I find yeah, the I find, the, the, I find that, that the gold deck strat is is, is similar, similar to the Sigic strat because, because again, um, 
it's all it's about like tavern denial. denial. And you, you can, can you can put, put your opponent, opponent you, you can, can look, look at their, their deck, deck, you can, can kind of see what, what they're, they're going, going for, for, whether it's crow combo or they're, they're just trying to straight power you with the rallies. rallies. Um, you, you can, can kind of deny that as well with, with, with the gold, gold deck, deck because um, I'm like, like the Sigic where you can just reset, reset the tavern, and you can uh, you can just purchase those cards and then destroy them down the road. So yeah, I think the gold deck is 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 a super strong strat. Again, it's probably. I would, I would say, say either, either building, building into that, that first, first or building into Sigic first is a great way to like start, start a match because long game, game then you can splash whatever other color and kind of figure out what your opponent's doing. Um, um, I, I think, think the Sigic has a little more control, control but the, the, the gold deck can have a lot of control. And the, the late game on the gold deck is uh, can be devastating, especially with like double Patreon activations and just the raw amount of gold. It can, it can create. create. Yeah, that that seven yeah. gold one, um, uh, gold card that lets you play an additional patron Currency that turn. Exchange. Yeah, Currency that, exchange. that card is is busted. Uh, every time that I see it in in the tavern, and we're kind of in the mid game where we could either one of us could actually get it. It I get scared because I'm starting to feel like okay, who's gonna get it first, and is this gonna be mm -hmm a problem later uh, most of the time it is um but to to whoever gets it and it, it's just a scary card to see on the board especially in the mid game where you have more control of like how much coin you have and you have you start getting and ramping the coin value each turn that you can get yeah. from your cards so it's it's kind of like a race to to see who gets the better cards in the mid game um and I mean, I love flipping the the green guy, the green Patreon, to me as mm -hmm. as soon as possible, and getting that one gold does make a difference. And it adds uh, up. It adds up very very well. Even in the early game, it it makes a difference. It can be the difference between you grabbing a rally, or um, the armory, and it can be the difference mm -hmm. between you grabbing that seven currency exchange card that lets you play an additional patron. And I, I think, think the, the currency exchange is the perfect counter to the rally. Like, oh, it's, so you can control the tavern, mm -hmm. and yeah, and then the patron. Like, if you learn the patrons and stuff, the good thing about the the grandmaster one is you can deny, you can buy on the board, and then just play it and delete it and get a lot of power that way. Like a lot of people don't really play the patron kind of game, but you can't underestimate the that. The Sigic one's good too. If you're versing an aggressive player with a lot of agents, you can just deny them straight away. Yeah, that's, so that's why every I like deck has its strengths and weaknesses. That's why I like to play the Sigic. Whenever, like, whenever I get to play the Sigic deck um, with the agents, I love it because you can just manipulate the top of your deck and just whatever you're getting. It's kind of like um, one of my favorite decks to play is the red deck and then the black deck because the black deck lets you kill the cards. So at the early game, what I do is I get some of the treasury cards so I can get some of the powerful red stuff like rally, armory, and then, um, you know, a couple of like twos and three coin cost of the red decks that are out there. And then I just get my power through that and I just keep playing the, the same deck, like the same hand over and over again because I'm destroying cards to where at the eventually at the end game, all I'm doing is just like gaining power every turn because I destroyed the treasury cards as well. Um, I think it's a very strong deck and people just don't know how to play those two color, uh, color combinations very well, but I've had a really a lot of luck with that. I don't know if you two have played that combination as much. <laughs> So, uh, uh, some similar, similar strat, strat though. though. Ideally, um, you know, if, if your, your deck, deck is stronger, stronger than your opponent's, opponent, mm -hmm. you, you want to be cycling, cycling through it as fast as you can. can. You want to draw into your combos, combos as quick as possible. possible. So, the, so less the less diluted, diluted your deck, deck is, is yeah. per se, mm -hmm. the more potent it becomes. Yes. And if you're ahead, there is no reason to allow your opponent an opportunity. Don't don't make it easy for them. Make it hard and slowly lock them out. 
you know, I know, I know Jen enjoys the, the purring deck. Um, yeah, so I was just going to, I was about to jump in on that one about Regina's purring nasty. liar. You let me yeah, get going. Now it takes a minute to ramp up, but once, if you let somebody get away with picking up too many of those cards, the combos are devastating. So it doesn't matter if somebody picked up the rally and picked up several red cards where they're just building power, power, power. The Regin cards, Purring Liar, he is all about locking them out of their points. So you start comboing your cards and you're taking their points right out of their um, everything they've gained so far. And then you're making them discard. So I've had some hands where the next turn I've made them discard all five cards just through combos. And then it's immediately my turn again and I just do it over and over and over. So, so I, I love, love playing, playing that deck. deck. The Regin Prairie Liar takes, takes it's a bit of a long game, game but if but you get away with like adding those cards into your hand and then disposing of all the writs and junk cards, cards besides, that's, that's when it really gets, gets strong. strong. So, so if you if you get into a long hand and you, you get away with getting those into your deck, you're gonna just devastate so far any other color that I've that I've played with. Wait, so have have you played the per deck with the black deck and is that how you're doing it or or no, I, I find, find I get, get the most opportunity, opportunity to really ramp, ramp it up by using the crow deck, deck because, because if, if I get I a few in there where I get to draw another one because, because I'm not cycling into them fast, fast enough, then, then I, I can, can usually line up, up like getting those into, into my hands, hands to combo by, by using, using the, the crow's, crow's draw extras. extras. Okay. And then I'll also supplement getting some power, like if I don't have enough to combo, you can get some of that early off the crow cards too. Okay. Okay. Or, or even with the, the red, red cards, cards dropping a couple in, like, two power, three power red cards. It's, it's just, just something, something to, like, get you there. there. Um, but, yeah, yeah once, once once you've got, got like, three, four of the orange, orange cards in your deck, deck and you just, you're just shutting down, down the other, other person, person from being in everything they gain, you take right back away from them. Well, the, the reason I asked is because I actually did some pretty nasty things to people with the per deck and the black mm-hmm. deck. Um yeah, yeah, I haven't I had, had a chance, chance yet to play, to play the black, black deck. deck. You should. It's so much fun because, like I said, like I was saying with the red deck, you could basically destroy everything. Obviously, you have to set it up just like you are setting out, up the, the per deck. But uh, the black deck is the same thing. You have to set it up. But at the end, like if you get, there is a black card that gives you three power. And if you combo off, it gives you another three power. That is one of the most powerful cards in that deck yeah it's, it's like, like four, four gold, gold too it's I four believe. gold yes it's like three or four gold it's very easy to get early game but if you're going for that strategy and and then you you get the agents the contract agents out there Mid- midnight, midnight raid, raid is, is the name of the card. card midnight raid okay yeah that card is so powerful so like that's where you get your power from and then you just keep cycling like that that same hand and you just deny your opponent of the prestige because you you rack up the agents with the per deck uh the ones that you know knock your your opponent's prestige and then you you just go nuts with the power on the black deck and anytime that um you see a better card out there in the tavern that you could use in the deck then you just destroy like you pick that card up um, and then you just destroy the other card that you're replacing it with. That's very strong. Jen, you should definitely look at that. And I, I highly suggest for our, our listeners to actually look at that deck and play different combinations out there, not just what everybody's playing. Because at the beginning, everybody was playing the Crow deck. Um, and yeah. yeah, it's yeah, a little it's, bit more, you know. It's, it's way becoming, becoming, the more you play, and I've only been playing, playing like, like, JP and Bolt can talk more about, like, like PvP playing, but I've only been playing NPCs, so the games are very slow by just playing, playing the NPCs. Um, I've tried my hand at doing the dailies, play a real person, and I've had that in my quest log for like three days straight because I just can't get a break on beating a person. Um, I find like I'm still learning, and people that can do away with me really quick when it looks like they're just picking up all random cards, and all of a sudden they're just like comboing like crazy. I'm like, well, how do they even do that? I'm getting wrecked, you know? Um, so, so if you, if you want, want to explain, explain too, like for, for, for the, the new players, players like me, like what, what do, do I need to do to go and get, get the black deck just so, so I can start, start playing, playing with it? it. Uh, the black deck, I believe is, um, I don't even have it yet because I don't, I'm not like JP and Bolt are and are nuts <laughs> just on that game. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> but you guys are, you guys are, you guys are. Um, I believe you have to I get believe. to like seven prestige or the seven on the quest line or whatever. 
Um, I'm not 100% sure, but there's players that already have that. So whenever I see that, um, that somebody picks that deck, I am like low-key excited. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've I've, I've played, played against, against that, that, and it's it's it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty tough, tough to play against because, because um, well, well another, another strength of um, the purring liar deck, deck is you know, know once you, you get, get ahead and you, you can, can just, just keep, keep double, double activating, activating the, <laughs> the bewilderment card activation, activation Patreon, Patreon and putting and stuff in your opponent's deck. deck. Once, once you get ahead, it's very it's it's a hard deck. It's hard for it to come back. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's hard when someone else jumps out ahead of you. But, but if, if you, you get, get ahead, ahead you're, you're you should, should be, be like, like locking, locking your opponent, opponent down. down. You're, you're not, not going, going yeah. for like the most the flashiest like plays or the flashiest like combos. You're, you're just staying ahead and incrementally like, like devastating your opponent well, and, and their and their draws. draws. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll never climb back into the game. You can just lock them out, and it's just a slow. And that it's even slower with like Cooper said with the black deck. I played someone the other day with that. But that, 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 that was, was building, building both of that. That, that was, was the first, first time I seen it, and it, it, it really threw me off. Really and that's did. one of the best things about that Patreon with, with, with Prairie Liar is once you get going and you're comfortable with the hands in your deck and you make a good bit of gold every hand that you don't need to buy the cards, just fill their hand with garbage. Just do it as many. Every time you see that gold card come up that lets you use the patron again, that's my favorite card because I'll, like, three times in a row, I'll just fill their hand with garbage. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It, it combos, combos the crow, crow deck really like, like a, a solo, solo crow deck, deck it combos, combos the heck out of it I you gotta have Sidic or something those something else Wilderman cards by the way but um that's why i like to play the black deck because i'll just get rid of them it's super easy um the best thing that i could tell you jen um as far as you know for somebody that has been playing the npcs and just getting into the game is don't be scared like you don't have to play ranked uh play casually don't be scared to lose a game. Um, just kind of see what everybody's doing. Learn what cards and what combination of cards are powerful in each deck. And then try to get that. Like, for example, whenever I see Armory out there rally, like, or, you know, the Currency Exchange, um, the, the two-coin gold card that gives you three-coin uh, luxury goods, I think. Luxury, luxury. yeah. Yeah, th you have to know key cards of what is more important that's some like you have to know what is more important to get um from the tavern and the hierarchy of what you're doing with your deck and what card is going to get you a better outcome at the end because there's times that you see rally and armory and currency exchange on the board and also the it's like I mean, when you get it right, like, like the luxury yeah, exports is so, so big, big early on, on. but if yeah, you're mid to late game, that card is useless. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You don't want it. Like, you probably won't like, even get to be able to play it because you have like, play it. Play it. like 30 cards in your deck by the time you cycle through. But yeah, that's exactly the experience. That's the biggest thing is you have to figure out like what your priorities are and where, what state of the, like what stage you're at in the game. Because when I get to the later stage, uh, especially if I'm playing the Grandmaster deck, I just start killing stuff to gain power because yeah. you probably won't see, you know, the armory, like you said, Bolt. You probably won't see it. So, I, you know, if I get it, if it, there's nothing else that, that's, you know, high, like, high coin up there, I might just get it and just immediately, like... like the favorite really thing I like to do is, you know, that you get... A good, a good gold, gold income, income like, like gain even if you just do rich for the first like four hands five hands so where you have no single coin when that the agent for the grandmaster is worth 10 you buy him and then you use him you can purchase another nine card item by the highest again you instantly kill him off that's nine prestige right there that's like no card in the game single-handedly has that much prestige or power like, like, unless, unless you, have you have to, like, like combo it like, like crazy. And, and you save, save that. that. So when, when someone's, someone's like, 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 I have games where I'm, like, at 15, 20 prestige, and they just hit 40, and then, bam, I'm at 60, and they, 60 and they can't even catch up, and I win. And they're just like, what the hell just happened? And it's like, I've been playing gold this whole time and building up my deck, and then, bam, in one hand, I just deposit this, then I get a patron use, and just, you know, sacrifice this card, this card, and they're all so high. Like, they've been playing the power game the whole time, thinking they're winning. And I'm, and I'm just, just waiting, waiting to pull that trigger. trigger. And they, they just played, played a really, really strong, strong crow hand into a red hand or something. 
and then I know, looking at their hand, that they've just got gold in it, and they just they popped everything they had, and then bam, I come back, and then I've won so many hands like that. So, yeah, in case to clarify, you're talking about the Hallelujah Halu Kinsman yes. card, the, 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 the ten, yeah, the ten gold agent that lets you acquire your nine gold. Yeah, so you can go like and then you just for people at home. Oh, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. You buy that, and then there's the nine green agent as well. I forget his name as well, but yeah, you just work your way down, and then if that card comes through, bam, you just sell that as well. You know, it's yeah, it's really strong. It's a strong combination that not a lot of people know about. Yeah, like I said, yeah. the, the, best, um, the best advice I can give somebody that's just starting out, that's played the NPCs, and... You know, starting to get into the mm, PvP games is just, you know, kind of... I mean, don't be afraid to lose. <laughs> don't be afraid. Play, play with, with your friends. No, play, play with, with your, your friends. friends. Get, get in a, a PSN. PSN. Share, share the, the game, game with, each with each other. other. Share strats. Share, share thoughts. thoughts. That, that way, way you can, can kind of see other, other points of view. That's, that's what's so great about this game. game. Everyone, Everyone can just sit, sit back, back enjoy, enjoy each other's company. You know, you know, talk, talk about, about certain, certain strategies, strategies, certain things, things this or that. that. I, I think, think that's, that's a really good way to learn. learn. I mean, Bolt, Bolt and I have played many, many games yeah. against each yeah. other and yeah. talking. Yeah, and in order strategy. to keep like, breaking up in the quest line of it, like NPCs, as I mentioned, is a really slow game. So if there's a daily to play people every day, but say you're just bad at the game and you're bad luck, you just can't win, it'd be nice as if even by losing, you gained as much like guild points for losing, losing just, just as, as you would have played in a PC. Yeah, or um, like by losing, losing you gain nothing, nothing which is kind of like, like a struggle. struggle. Or play two games against um you know a P, you know non NPC for the you know maybe get two games in and a bronze reward or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That way you don't have to keep going uh, and going and on and on and on. So I mean it it makes sense to to do that. Um speaking of like playing people uh our our guild cougar city is actually going to start hosting monthly tournaments that is going to feed into a big christmas tournament christmas month tournament what's gonna happen is on july 24th um we we're gonna have at 7 p.m eastern we're gonna have our first tournament it's gonna be best two out of three at top four so when you get to top four, you'll play the best two out of three games. Um, you'll you have to win two out of those three games, and the rest is just one single game. But after top four, it's best two out of three. We're gonna make it to twenty five k. The buy in is twenty five k, but we will let people trade in gold mats. We'll set a price uh, point for the gold mats, and if they don't want to pay gold, they can just pay with mats um we're really excited the the winner of each month there's gonna be five tourneys be between now and then um each winner of those is going to have a seat on that last christmas tournament and if you have won a tournament before don't fret you can still play you can still win um you're the invitation is going to extend to the person that's second place. And if you two have won, then it's just going to go down the road. Every time you play a tournament, whether you win or lose, participate, whatever, you're going to get Cougar City points, which means the last three spots that are going to be in that top eight at the end of the year are going to be based on who has the higher points that does not have an invite by winning one of these monthly tournaments so um i mean what do you guys think about that isn't that you know something cool i don't think anybody else has been doing anything like that in the game so far yeah i haven't, I haven't seen it and i haven't seen anyone doing anything like that so so um just to uh, summarize so there's going to be a monthly tournament with a 25,000 gold buy-in or mats, um, whoever, whoever shows up could, I mean, it, I mean, it could potentially be a long event, um, but it's going to be best of ones. So 
Uh, you win your match, you move on to the next round. You win your match, you move on to the next round until you get into like a, a top four. So a, a semifinal and a final. And then that's best of three. And then if you win that, you have an automatic invite to the big end of the year tournament. And uh, what do we win at the end of the year, Cougar? Well, like, what if we win the whole? <laughs> what do we the top four is going to split uh, five mil gold. Just, uh, yeah, five mil gold <laughs> is going to be split in the top four. Obviously, first place is going to get a big chunk of that. But uh, top four is going to enjoy some of that gold, some of that coin. We will be giving out um, mats, patterns, motifs, all kinds of shenanigans, luxury items, furnishing luxury items. Um, not only in that last tournament, but in the other tournaments too that's why i was saying if even if you win a tournament it's worth it to like win the next tournament because you get more stuff and you're already locked in for that seat so you could potentially help a buddy and say hey i'm already locked but you know you're you're gonna you're gonna get this this uh tournament seat so I'll see you in December, I guess. <laughs> I'll beat you there. Yeah. But uh, where, are we, where are we going to sign up for this? Is there a website? Is there no. a Discord? Where, we, where are we going to sign up for this? We will, be, we will be doing it in Discord. We already have a Tales of Tribute uh, section in our Discord. And our Discord um, link is on our message of the day. So if you don't have Discord, we could potentially work with people that don't or don't want to get discord uh but a lot of the information is going to be on that section in our discord server and we'll have the leader or well not the leaderboard but the ranking system with the cougar city points of who's winning uh as far as points and who has an invite already we'll we'll basically put a little nudge on you know who who's been invited so you can see like for example let's say bolt is on the top of uh the cougar city points but he already has an invite and you can see that so you can say well okay so who's second on in the points oh this person doesn't have an invite yet so most likely they'll get one of those three spots at the end if they don't have a spot taken by the time december comes around so <clears throat> everything will be i have a question, question. yeah I have a question. question. With the, the point, point, do you mean so like, like the, the points point are cumulative of how much power they, they get each game, game or by like, like how many games, games they played? And no, it'll be participate. You'll get participation oh, okay. points just for signing up mm -hmm. and playing. Um, so potentially if you sign up and play in every tournament and let's say you get to top four, but you don't win, you could potentially snag a seat on those last three spots because you accumulated enough points and you done well. So it's not just winning the tournament, but it encourages people to play at each tournament potentially to earn that That's spot. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. That, that sounds, sounds great. great. Uh, are we, we going to get, get someone, someone to build, build ourselves a casino, casino with a whole bunch, bunch of tables <laughs> and you see <laughs> a great big thing? It would be great. great. We, can, <laughs> we can definitely get that working. Um, I know Crackpot loves to have... Uh, those things, but right now Mrs. Fiddle uh -huh. and I are working on on that. One other thing I forgot to mention is that um, I know JP wants to do this, and we can definitely get it done. But if people want to record their games and put them on YouTube, send us the links, then we can potentially commentate on your on your game. And I would like to do that. I would like to have a kind of a not on a podcast, but like in a separate entity of you know a tournament podcast of the july tournament and we can have a couple of games and kind of commentate on what um this person did right and just some strategy so it'll be pretty cool i know jpy is very excited to do that um so if people want to record their games put them on youtube upload them and send us the links we can actually get you featured your games featured in this on the side so i think that's pretty cool jp i know jp is excited about that yeah it'll be it'll, it'll be, be fun, fun. It'll, it'll be it'll, it'll be, be super, super fun, fun. Um, um you know that's, that's really how you learn the game, game right, right? Mm -hmm. you learn the game from watching and that's like back, back to what i was saying earlier, earlier. Play, play with, with a friend, friend talk about what you do and what you don't do in certain situations that's honestly 
I think the best way to improve your play. It really is. is. Like, like find a group of people that you enjoy and, you know, sit there and get in a PSN chat. I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like this game is taking over like PSN chats. I don't know how many times I get out of a, out of a trial group and everyone's still in the PSN chat. Hey, do you want to play cards? Yeah, let's play cards. Like our, our, our prog's over. Let's go play cards. I've seen it. Like I've done it three times this week. Oh, I've, I've done it too. Whenever you guys uh, go to bed, like really late at night after I get out of my other group, uh, I know Pluto um, and Vixen, we get into a party chat together and we're talking. That's all we're talking about. We're talking about cards. Game Slayer mm -hmm. gets really pissed at us too because he doesn't like the card game. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we just talk about that. It's, so it's, I mean, if you have friends that are that are good at the game, that is definitely a way to do it. Um, speaking of being good at the game, um, let's talk about the state of the game and what is going on there. I know we talked a little bit about Dread Sail, the, myth the mythics, and the new comps for this patch, but um, there's some changes that have happened in the last couple of weeks, like the light attack nerfing and such. And we wanted to kind of touch up on that. Um, I know everybody else has touched on, on that. And I felt that we should touch on that light attack thing. Uh, I know we were talking about a little bit about it the other night. Um, JP, I know you had some strong words for that. So let's start it off there. Well, I think... It upsets me because, yes, it's a skill that's light attack weaving that's acquired, uh, you know, by playing ESO. It's one of the unique things about our combat system that, you know, make it interesting. You know, as a former World of Warcraft player coming over to this, um, I didn't have to light attack. I didn't have to weave. The game does it for you. You know, you tab target and cast your spells and tab a target, you know. It gets pretty boring, and I thought... I found, I found one of the things, things I found interesting in ESO, ESO is the, the whole idea of um, light attack weaving, animation canceling, canceling, all of that. And, and I feel like, yes, I understand, like, you know, know the, the direction, direction that Zoss is heading in, wanting, wanting to be more, more inclusive. inclusive. But, but I don't really think, think it's that, that takes that much effort to, to become a master, master not a master, but to be competent enough at it to clear, like, all content in the game. So what, so what I, I think, think you're, what, what I, I think, think this change does is really, you're, you're just hurting the super like dedicated people that actually spend the time and to get really good at their weaving, like really, like, really good, better, better than they, they probably need to be, but it's, it's almost, almost like a game, game within the game. game. People, people enjoy, enjoy, I know people enjoy humping dummies and, and it's a whole other like sub meta of any like discord is like, who's got the highest sort parts or who has the highest. Necro parts. There's a lot of people that are really into that, and they spent they've spent a lot of time in potions at wanting to be better. And obviously, you don't have to reach that level that some of these 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 folks are at to complete content. You don't have to be that that good, but you do have to put some sort of effort. So I think it punishes them. I think it punishes the people who care that much to put that amount of time in. And, you know, I don't I don't really like it. I mean, the top will always be the top, right? There's always going to be the, the ceiling and the floor. And I, I get that they're, like, narrowing the gap between the two. But I think you're punishing the people that, that really do want to improve in ESO. And, you know, it's I don't think it's going to have the effect that... Uh, Zoss, Zoss thinks it's going to have. I don't, I don't think, think it's going to get more interest in trials. I mean, I don't know. I, I look, look at some of our beginner teams, even within the guild, it's hard to fill a beginner roster. I mean, people just don't want to do it, and even making it easier for them, they don't even want to show up anyways to even understand. You know, I mean, I don't know. We've had pretty low turnout with our um, Project Vitality and some of the other, you know, groups to fill. And, and I, I just think, think that, that player, player, that super, super casual, casual player, player that they're, they're trying to be inclusive to, to just doesn't, doesn't want any part of it anyways. So, so why why harm that end game, game player that's spent, spent five, five years in parses, parses, you know, five or six parses, parses a day for the last five years and really, really, really works on it. I just I I, 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 I understand like the reasoning. But, but I, don't I don't think it's going to have the effect that, that they're, they're hoping. hoping. And, and I, I hope, hope it doesn't, doesn't go live. live. There's, There's probably, probably some, some middle, middle ground somewhere. somewhere but, but yeah, I don't, I don't like it. it. What do you How think about you, Bob? Bob? Yeah, what do you think, Bob? I haven't heard Bob's, Bob's opinion, opinion on this one. one. Okay, so 
back in the day, lead attacks didn't used to scale at all. It used to be flat. So just going back, way back before you guys played the game, it was a flat damage rate. Wouldn't crit, didn't crit, didn't scale off your damage, didn't scale off your resources. It was just flat. And they changed it to scale. And ever since then, with once we kind of got out of the vet ranks and started getting CPs, and you know, we talk about this power creep. And like like you mentioned, JP, there's a lot of people that are really good at that actions per minute APM. Um, and and so we've gotten to the point, and and this is where I feel Zoss is is at is. You've gotten to this point now where there is too much damage outgoing and they're trying to reel it back and they're not sure how to do it. So the only way they know how to do it without really recoding like everything is to take some of this damage away from us and, and, and bring it, bring it back down. Now in the post that they've made, um, it's, it was relatively cryptic. Uh, they, didn't they didn't give us a whole, whole lot of numbers. numbers. The two, two numbers, numbers that they, they did give us was, uh, you know, they, they said, said that um, light attacks were 15 to 20 percent for the very high end player, player, right? Which, which are, are your, your, you know, your, your people, people who are, are getting those APMs, APMs yeah. your Charles, your, your unchained your animals. Yeah, the world records, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly, right? So, so most, most of us probably sit. At, at the, the lower, lower end, end right, right. Um, um, I, I, I feel, feel I'm pretty, pretty proficient, proficient at, at, at my at my stamplar um, I know there's people that, that, that do higher damage than I do but I'm you know if I had a combat matrix and I was able to break it out I'd be willing to bet that I'm somewhere between 10 to 13 percent of my damage is from light attacks um, now the number that they said that they're that in their internal testing has reduced overall damage was the 6 to 11 percent. It doesn't translate exactly to your light attack damage decrease. So if somebody's hitting 100 and 100, just 100K, we'll just leave it, make the math simple, 100K, right? They want to see a 6 percent reduction, 6 to, a, 6 to 11 percent reduction. So that's going to be 6 to 11K, somewhere in there. Now your light attacks aren't going to decrease Proportionally, necessarily, 6 to 11K, because you also have, they're also messing with the dots. They don't necessarily talk about in that light attack, but goes into that reduction of, 10, of that 6 to 11%. So now your dots are being extended. It's allowing people who aren't as good with the APMs to get extra spammables in there because they're not having to worry about refreshing dots as often. And and I know, JP, you were specifically talking about light attacks, but I think overall this will bring the floor up. Now, I'm not saying it's going to get a bunch of more people into trials. That's a whole different animal all in itself is how do you get people excited about trials? However, I do think that some of the lower end uh, damage number folks who aren't able to hit those APMs aren't as good at lead attack weaving, don't have the big numbers on the target dummy. If they do see an increase, because I think they will see an increase in their damage because of the extra spammable and the longer dots, it may get them excited to start looking at working on the craft of DPS and light attack weaving. Um, and, and maybe when they see that bigger number, maybe they do go, well, you know, my, my guild does say, you know, we, we need this much DPS. There's very few, you know, there, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's going to fill rosters, but, you know, the high-end players, we're still going to be high-end players. We're going to figure it out. Um, and even with the reduction of, you know, a, a 6K reduction, we're still going to be clearing stuff way faster than what the devs intended us to, to clear it, right? Um, so it's, some of the videos I've seen, it's not a, a they're, they're doing some math, 
but it's not a direct apples to apples comparison. They're kind of doing an apples with the overall damage and going, oh, well, you know, yeah, my, my DPS is going to drop by, you know, 10K or 7K or whatever. And that relates directly to my lat attack damage. No, 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 it doesn't. They said overall damage. So your overall parse will drop 6K. Your light attack damage, probably going to drop about a K at the high end. Maybe 2K at the high end. The low end, it's only going to drop about 500 to 1,000. So they are shrinking that gap, narrowing that gap. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at with the light attack nerf. Number one, it's not live. We don't know the numbers. We don't know the exact numbers. We have to test it on PTS. We have to see. And the last time they changed something like this, they made single target dots so strong. And we didn't do enough testing on PTS to tell to show them that, and it went live. And then people were crazy with single target dots. Everybody was running a Masters, Masters dual wheel and the Maelstrom dual wheel and just hitting those single target dots, right? Yeah, I remember so I remember that. People have to get on the PTS. We have to test this. We have to give them our, our feedback and be don't be aggressive about it. Don't be upset about it. Just give them, hey, this is what I'm seeing. This is what we're doing. This is our feedback. And and shows us what it is on, you know, with the community. They do a lot of internal testing and we need to we need to show them what, what's going on um, in in the damage numbers. Yeah, I mean, now I said a whole a whole mouthful and I don't know I rambled. So <laughs> No, no, it's it's actually a good point. Um, you know, I like that point of view there, there was a time, um, I did play back then, uh, probably not as, uh, aggressive as I play now as far as the end game, but I understand, um, that, you know, that time, the, the single target was just amazing. I really do think there is probably a middle ground that they need to do and you know you're right we need to get on pts and figure out that middle ground so we can reach out to the developers and say hey you know let's kind of see where this is at and maybe you know this particular number is what you guys need to be in order to not only get uh the you know the charles or skinny uh nefes uh the world people that are pushing scores in the community and then get those people that maybe haven't had the biggest number increases on a dummy and weren't able to get into you know specific groups kind of bring them up a little bit i understand why the developers are doing it because there's more people that are at the later you know there's there's only like really two to three groups in each platform potentially um and na and eu that are doing world records um i know there's only about two in ps4 and a and i believe there's one or two in ps4 eu bob you probably know about the eu more than i do but if i had to guess it's probably about two to three groups in each uh console and then pc is you know probably two or three groups that are doing it as well so they're more focused on the rest of them, not that small point zero zero percentage of players. I mean, yeah, exactly. It's you know, there's there's Jack Ward's group over on on EU PlayStation EU does a lot of world first and, and kind of record pushing. Um, I'm not sure how much more they're they're doing recently, but but they were doing that before. Um, I think they were the. I'm not mistaken, they were the first or second group to get Godslayer on, on council. Um, yeah, Scotty's <clears throat> group over here on PS4 and A is the same way. I mean, I don't know how yeah, much yeah. they're doing. I know I saw American Hunter um, on the other mm -hmm. day. That's one of their DPS. So I don't know what they're yeah. actually doing. I mean, it is going to hurt them, and it sucks that those people have put a lot of time and effort into their... You know, JP is right. They put a lot of time and effort into a dummy parse. and just. Well, let me defend, defend myself, myself here. here. <laughs> let me <laughs> defend, defend myself, myself here, here, Bob. <laughs> Yeah. I, think, I think I think I think long dots, dots make stale, stale gameplay. gameplay. Yeah. I mean, I, I like, like to track, track five, five timers. timers. That's, that's 
why I like to trial lead. I like to track five timers, track debuffs, track buffs, track teammates. I mean, that's what gets me excited about the game. I think long dot timers are stale. I think it dumbs the game down, makes it boring, less interesting. Plus, how does it how does it translate in with certain boss mechanics and in, in, in vulnerability phases and things like that? And now you've got all these long dots that I don't know. I just I think it stales down the gameplay. And um, I, I think, think it's going to be a struggle because, because you know, a lot, lot of this, a lot of this new content, content you know, was, was scaled, scaled to the power creep that's, that's in the game. game. So, so you, you do this, this what does that, that mean? mean? Like, like, are we, we all, all going, going back, back to VMAW, like, like progs? Or, or I mean, are, are people going to be able to prog like the new trifecta? Like, once this happens, I mean, are think about all the progress right now. People that are really close to their planes breakers and dawn dawnbringers, like. That, that setback, setback is gonna, gonna could, could potentially, potentially set back a lot of prog groups, groups and, and I just I don't think it's I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair at all. Like honestly. honestly. This patch has already set. Um I know in reality, um LG or also known as Vanscore, they they were pushing God Slayer and their team was almost there. Like they were getting a lot of thirty four out of thirty six and they were getting the time. But, you know, they took a step back a little bit. Their stuff dying a little bit less and such. So it is going to push some of those, um, I guess, not necessarily middle of the pack groups, but closer to the elite end game groups a little bit set back. And that is kind of discouraging. Um, well, it's, it's going to be, be even, even that, and, and you're speaking, speaking in the context, context of this patch. patch. Yeah. Wait, Wait till, till if, if this, this goes, goes again. Bob, Bob, Bob's, Bob's right. right. Like, like, I mean, we, we don't, don't know. Obviously, obviously it's, it's all we're all, we're all speculating, speculating, right? We have to test. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's all speculation just, right now too. And, and but, but I, I think, think like, like with building on what JP and Bob was saying, um, when, when Zoss, Zoss talks about like obscene damage numbers, they're talking about the people that put out like those three minute Griffin hearts, like. And that's, and that's so, so unobtainable, unobtainable to the uh, the average player. player. Like, like for example, our console. own prog group on console, especially our own prog group, has been just trying to get a purple skin clear for months now. And, and it's, it's like, like give us the chance to like not only understand the mechanics and get down movement as a group, but if our DPS goes down, it's like like the groups have to start over again. Like what is our new strategy going to be? Because we need creepers to die at a certain pace before they start killing people. You know. And, and we're, we're not, not going, going for our Griffin hearts, hearts, you know? Yeah, What's it going to do to those, like, middle-of-the-road teams, teams that, that are just trying to get their clears? clears. Yep. That's, it's, uh, that's yeah. I mean, Bob makes a good point in that. Like, we just need to test it and figure out, like, the best middle ground. Because there's got to be a middle ground. There was a middle ground before. Um, you know, I hope they don't change it, to be honest. I really hope they just leave it like it is right now. They don't need to. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I do, do agree, agree JP, JP, when when the the, the single target dot, you know, rotation, rotation was, was, was there. It was pretty stale, especially, especially for me as a as a Templar, as a Stamplar. <laughs> like I yeah. dropped I dropped <laughs> endless <laughs> hell retro uh retro <laughs> ret and then I I spammed jabs for like thirteen <laughs> times in a row. Relayed my beast. Exciting and yeah, it was super <laughs> exciting <laughs> rotation. Um so, so yeah, I, I, get I get the whole tracking, tracking the timers and, and everything, and and, and again, again, that's, that's something, something that we need to tell them too, and maybe they'll maybe they'll, they'll pull that back, back. Yeah. Um, but we need to test it. it. I, I, agree. I agree. Keeping, Keeping track, track of more timers is a skill gap, gap right? Yes. Being, Being able, able to multitask, and, and you don't, don't want to necessarily, necessarily take that away from away from the game. No, it's, it's exciting. We need to, yeah, yeah, we need, we need to, to let, let them know that. Um, an overreaction and just yelling at somebody, somebody you know, you took my germ, you're ruining my game. That's, that's not, not going to get us anywhere. We, we need no, I agree with you. Logical, logical, logical arguments, here it's the data, here's what we're doing, here's what's happening. Um, and, you know, to, to say, in, you know, for the groups taking a step back and, and everything, um, you're... You're right, right, because a lot of groups build very glass cannon because they build as close to that wall as much damage as they can. And and again, they're trying to 
copy or imitate what they've seen these other hiring groups do. And maybe that's not in their wheelhouse for the group that they're in. Maybe that's not their skill gap. And maybe they need to reevaluate what they're doing. Um, you know, in, in our group, if we do lower our damage, maybe we need to look at are there, are there ways for us to mitigate something? Is there a way for us to take a little bit less damage? A lot of our deaths, Jen, you were mentioning our, our Prague and, and VCR, a lot of our deaths are because we don't group well. <laughs> it has nothing to do with damage. We're, we're not grouping that tail for fire, and we're not picking up ice, or we're holding on to ice for too long. You know, and you know, yeah, a little bit of less damage on the creepers. You know, you'll see it maybe if we do what we're supposed to and all turn at the same time and all focus that creeper, even if we're all hitting a little bit less, the creeper may live an extra second, maybe an extra half a second. Is it going to be detrimental? I don't know. But again, we'll have to see when, when everything goes live. But um, I, think, I think what we're trying, I think ultimately, obviously I don't work at Zoss, but I think ultimately what they're trying to get to is going back to a very mechanics-oriented trial scenario. Well, if you don't do mechanics, you will die. Well, can I can I seg? Can I can I yeah? Can I can we segue here then? Because why not just make the content? Why not make the content harder? I think VDSR is is a great trial. I think it's perfect, perfectly designed. Like so so instead of doing making all these changes, just they should have made the content a little more. I don't know. Make it more difficult. Like don't mess with people's. What they, they where they, they work, work to get to, get to a certain point, point on a dummy, dummy just you know, know make the content and adjust to it. I mean, a little more. I mean, I the trial's great. great. I, I, think I mean, the, the, the trial's amazing. amazing. Dread really is. Reef is probably one of the best trials that Sauce has come out with ever since VMAL came out. I remember when VMAL came out, and I'm seeing the same pattern. When VMO came out, there was only a couple of groups who were able to beat it. Granted, the DPS was a lot lower and such. Um, but you still had to do mechanics in Vmall. Um, if you didn't do mechanics, especially on the twins, you you wiped the group. And you still, still have to do mechanics. mechanics. <laughs> you still <laughs> have to do mechanics, mechanics on twins. On twins. <laughs> like, so I really like the fact that they they did a mechanic heavy trial like bread, uh, the Dreadsail Reef. And one thing that we were talking about, um, maybe teaching somebody. Um, that is not in the end game yet is to in the normal dread sales make it to where you have a hard mode in normal and give it purple gear so people that could actually learn the mechanics that happen in vet so for example in vka hard mode on the first boss you have shamans you have uh totems you have the the um stupid as the snake thing that you have to kill and then you have to go around the room to kill the shamans why not have that on normal too but have it as a hard mode on normal and you don't even have to give people you know not like gold gear or whatever at the end just give them a purple ring of you know not perfected non-perfected yeah. um i mean if you want to give them gold non-perfected jewelry that's fine too but i don't think that's a good idea i uh, think purple non-perfected gear for completing a hard mode and um you know maybe maybe even like a little furniture or something I, it doesn't matter like the gear is fine enough with me but one way to teach these new people the trials in hard mode is to teach them in normal um, so why not have that on normal too? That way you could do that. Um, the the skill gap is there. Yeah, what, what you guys are really, really talking, talking about is that, that like the normals are just they're so unbelievably easy, easy when, when it comes to a trial, trial that there's, there's no reason to stop, stop and learn. It's, it's just burn through, through everything and collect gear right, right now. There's, there's no, no reason to be in there otherwise. Where teams that want to go in and start pushing the harder content, well, they need a starting platform. They need to like go in and before they're getting one shot by things that don't know how it works, 
they need like a middle platform to say, okay, this is what ad is important. This is what this box is going to do. And when you get to that veteran hard mode or veteran, veteran hard modes, now you're ramping up the health on them. And now you're ramping up the damage where if you miss this mechanic, it's going to kill you. And like, that's, that's what we're getting at. Is like, there's, there's no middle road right now between gear farming and challenge. I wish they would do that, to be honest. Like, it it, it would be nice. Um, I know Bob would like it. <laughs> oh, I've been a proponent of something like this forever in the game. Like, normal is way too easy. It's yeah. overland, essentially. And, um, you know, your, your, ad, your stuff has, like, 9K resistance, you know, up, so a puncture from a tank strips all resistance, and you're doing 100% damage on everything. Um, and then... You know, you, you don't, don't get, get all the mechanics. The mechanics, mechanics don't, don't one-shot one you, you, right? Specifically, Specifically in Dread, Dread we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Dread Cell. Cell. The first the boss, the, the, the domes, domes, if you and Vet overlap the domes and kill make an explosion, explosion, it kills you. All on normal, it doesn't. It takes, it takes you about down to half, half health or so. so. Um, so they do. They need to have something for normal that will, for groups that don't want to just go in there and get the blue gear, but want to actually learn the mechanics, give them give them a little bit more of a challenge. A, a banner, you know, put up a banner in normal. Yeah. And give you, you know, raise the resistances of, of the enemies, I don't know, to, I don't know, 13K, 14K, you know, halfway between what normal would be and that. And, and then show all of, show all of the, the mechanics for for the vet so you can kind of see what's going on i would love that same, same thing, thing for the dungeons, dungeons. i would yeah. love to see that format content too that's that's actually was was uh i was about to say that not just do it for trials but for dungeons too um especially the dlc dungeons and i mean i'm not asking for sauce to go back and implement that into every single trial because obviously they didn't do that in craglorn uh where you could turn on and off the hard modes but maybe you know in the next and two chapters from now implement that that is something that you could potentially work towards and it i mean it would be a new twist to the community and i think it will get more people trying to look at the hard modes of these trials um if anything i mean if anything just to farm purple gear and if they can do it you know they can do it and then you still have the people that just want to farm the blue gear and that don't really care. You could still give them that and then have the hard modes where it actually teaches you what's going on. And, you know, going back to the light attack weaving thing just for one minute, I Skinny said the same thing. Like, I wish there was somewhere in the game where it teaches you weaving. There needs to be a tutorial. If we're going to keep light attack weaving in the game, at least put something in the game to teach people how to light attack weave, how to animation cancel. So you don't have to go jump around YouTube and, you know, be on a dummy to try to get it right. Um, it, like I said, I, I like the new trial. Like, I wish they were more mechanic heavy. And I really do wish they would implement on normal to have, like, a hard mode normal so people could actually learn the mechanics uh, before going in vet hard mode and and do that. Um, but there's there's a lot the of comps in the game too, so it would make it easier for them to, to practice those new comps as well. The, the best, best thing, thing about, about the, the new trial, trial is um, everybody, everybody has, has to participate. participate. You know, you know, the, the tanks, tanks, both tanks, tanks even on that, that first boss, boss. I mean, technically, is there a main tank and an off tank? tank? What? Not, Not really. really. They, they both have to do the same mechanics, mechanics which is kind of cool. cool. All the, the DPS, DPS, pretty much, not all, but I mean, it depends on how you do, what strat you're doing, but a lot of the DPS, most of the DPS in your group has to participate at some point. You know, the healers can participate. You know, there's kill checks on the last boss. You know, there's. I love the fact that everybody, every role, is heavily, heavily involved, involved doing their, their own, own little part, part. And, and you know, you know that's, that's what, what that's, that's what, what makes it so great you know there is a couple you know non-mechanic non heavy fights but they're, they're pretty, pretty healing intensive, intensive. The, the ones that, the, 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 the the fights that that, that don't, don't involve heavy mechanics, mechanics they're healing intensive and the size of you know the arena that you're actually like fighting in i love it 
I love, love the, the wide openness, openness the, the the movement. movement. You know, yeah, you're not, not just moving like, like in a small. small you're, you're not boxed, boxed in a small room. room. I, love I love the size of like you know the, the battleground, battleground uh, essentially, or the, the battlefield. battlefield. I love these big battlefields of movement and running around and like everyone doing stuff. I think it makes groups like have to play together. I think I think it's good. I wish, sure. I wish they would keep putting these high um, intensive mechanic trials into the game. Um, yeah, 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 for, for sure. sure. They need to. That's it's like that, I absolutely that first that fight. fight. Yeah, that, that first fight, fight it's like, like okay, okay, let's, let's add, add a new mechanic, mechanic with like bubbles. bubbles. Oh, oh, and, and by, by the way, way let's, let's throw like every tank, tank mechanic. mechanic. Let's, Let's add, add tank, tank swaps, swaps and, and you, you know all, all kinds, kinds of stuff, stuff. like heal check, check like, like just it's it's, it's cool. cool. It, it, it was, was really 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 well done. done. My favorite. I agree completely. Agree. This is the way that I want trials going forward to be because the skill gap is not in the damage necessarily. The skill no. gap is specifically how well do you move as a group? How well is your group gelled together? How well do your tanks move? This is the way a trial should be. It should be a dance, a beautiful dance between everybody in the group. No one in the group can hide. Everybody has to have a responsibility. Yeah. Well, um, speaking of responsibilities, um, I would like to to get uh, a big shout out to our Discord boosters. We have Boss Styles, myself, Scoring Music 09, and X3DNX. Um, I'm trying to get everybody to boost our Discord server. And, you know, we also have our Patreon as well. That's uh, going to be in the description section of this video. So go ahead and check that out. Um, if you want to get a shout out, the Patreon has some really cool perks as well. You can come in and chat with us and kind of get a perspective in one of those tiers. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, one, one other thing that I was going to ask JP, I know you've been working a lot with the Oaken Soul mythic. Um, do you think that's going to be more end game viable than it is now? It could be. I think I've trashed that up. It can be, be. Um, um, I've, I've been, been testing, testing a little, little bit, bit, but I mean, basically, basically if you think about a basic, basic trash setup, the fights, the fights are, are so, so quick, quick. Um, um, in, in trash, trash it's, it's pretty overpowered, overpowered to have all those major buffs immediately, immediately on you. you. Like, like, think, think about, about it instantly, instantly everything. everything. And, and you, you really, really need the back bar in trash. In trash. Um, um, I think it's, uh, I think I think it's interesting. interesting. I've been testing with it the last few days. Um, spend a win and take your kilt off. Stop an Oaken Soul on if you're on a Sork. Put your spend a win on and... Go, go nuts, nuts with, with it. it. it uh, the, major the major heroism, heroism is uh, very, 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 very exciting, exciting too, especially in that. And it's just like, I don't know. I think it, I think it could be one of those things, like a niche set. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't heard anyone like really mention it. Um, people a lot smarter than me should test it out. Groups should test it out. But I mean, I'm telling you, it just having all of that power right there on demand, and it makes you tanky as heck. Not, not worried about, about losing a loose ad hitting, hitting you and knocking your kilt stacks, stacks down or anything like that. that. Just, just just slap that thing on for your trash pulls, take it back off for your boss fights. fights. Um, I, think I think it could be, be I, think I think it does have a situational situation application. application. I really, I really do. do. I mean, I mean someone would have probably have to test it and see if it improves like times or anything like that on trash. But just in my little bit of early testing, on scientific, it, it, it seems, seems seems pretty strong, strong on trash. trash. Definitely high, high survivability as well. That's, that's what that's how I view the mythic, mythic anyways. anyways. You know, you, know, you get, get into a random pug group, group that you're not sure what everyone's wearing. wearing. You know, maybe, maybe someone, someone picked, picked you up in Craglorn, and you know the first pull goes, and you know you wipe on the first boss and Hellra, and you know you slap that thing on, and you know now you're just tanking and you get it done. You know, that's definitely something. Um, to, to have, have like, like in your, in your toolbox. toolbox. That's, that's what, what that's what the direction, the direction that I think the mythics, mythics take the game, and, and I, I think, think that it, it makes it really interesting because there's different like applications, applications for them. And I think I don't, I don't think, think they've, they've all been truly really explored yet by the community. community. I, think I think it's still like undefined and what mythics good here or there. 
you know, you besides, besides the fact that, that it's just broken, broken in PVP, PvP but, but you know, that's, that's a whole nother story. story. <laughs> yeah, and we, we will be definitely doing a little bit of testing, not just with Mythics, but with other sets. I know Jen is testing Pillager um, and VCR, and I know they're having really good results. Just overall, like Pillager as a set is it's definitely a set for a healer to have. It's, it's the sleeper. sleeper. It's, it's the, the sleeper, sleeper set. set of this of this. And I even yeah. I even told you, JP, before the patch, like when they put that thing out, I said, "Hey, look, this is gonna be a sleeper set in this in this." We were talking about this, um, a, like what a month and a half ago, two months ago, when they were they put this stuff out. So. Well, definitely. I would like, I would like to keep, keep uh, Pillager, Pillager on the down low because, because I don't, don't want to talk, talk about, about it because if it's, it's too good, they're going to nerf it. No, it's, it's, I don't think it's too good. I don't think it's too good. It, it requires it's working a lot really of well. Yeah. It requires well, a lot of coordination. So. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you have to make, you have to put a DPS like an MK then to fit it into your comp. So, like, that's not, it's not too good because you have to adjust. Now, and um you know, you know it's, it's one thing, thing like mk like on a healer it's, it's a whole nother story on a dps like doing mechanics in it you know it does take some sort of like skill level to like you know maintain those other times and not die and be able to block especially trials with block mechanics so so yes i feel like it's a higher risk to do that you have to work a little harder but you should be rewarded with you know Two, two atros, atros out, out at the same, same time, time. <laughs> or, or you, you can, can go uh, uh, shooting, shooting star into dawnbreaker <laughs> yeah or like uh, yeah, you, you can go, go death row alt into end cap or you can go shooting star into end cap and literally buff the damage of the dot from like the shooting star like it's just it's bananas like it's 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 not Yep. And, and, and that's your reward, reward for having, having someone, someone in your group that can wear one of the support sets or do whatever I mean I I'm perfectly fine with that. I think, I think it's, it's fair. fair. And we will, we will be doing some testing on our own as well on that. So I know I know uh, our group has been heavily testing um, the new sets with the comps that we have. We've been uh, stamp comp for probably like a patch and a half now. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, almost a patch and a half after this patch. So we'll, we'll be testing some stuff out and letting you guys kind of know some of the testing that we've done and seen i mean obviously pt like um stuff on pts and and on pc is a little bit better because you have the numbers and we don't necessarily have the numbers but we see the results yeah but we have the yeah but we have the lag so yeah. i mean let's, <laughs> let's face it like obviously the pc can set, set the ceiling, ceiling for something, something. And, and then, then you know you, you can, can evaluate, evaluate like, like how realistic is something like you know on here on console without all the the fancy, fancy add-ons add as well, well you, know, you know so no but yeah. um There's... yeah we'll we'll get to we'll get to some of that in our next podcast i know um we're we've been kind of wanting to talk about some healer stuff uh off meta healing i know jen's gonna have a field day with this and i'm gonna have a field day and jp is very excited so we'll probably hear that in the next podcast um it'll be a shorter one than this one but um you know thanks again to to our boosters for boosting our discord server and just you know make sure you guys go in and get signed up for that tales of tribute tournament that's going to be happening and uh sign ups are going to be in our discord and you can dm one of the gms in the game as well if you don't have discord we'll be advertising the crap out of it don't worry about it but um you know, Bolt, it's, it's been nice to have you here, man. I know you didn't talk as much because um, we brought you for the Tales of Tribute. But thank you for being oh, here, man. Oh, I love it. Thank, thank you for having me. me. Yeah, it was it was a fresh, uh, you know, breath of fresh air to have you back. So hopefully <laughs> uh, in the future we'll have you back again. And like I said, you know, we're going to try to have a couple of uh, people come and be a special guest in in this podcast um and you know we'll have some other topics now if people want us to talk about a certain topic uh you can always dm me cougars bay on discord or send me a psn you can comment on our youtube channel and we'll see we'll see what kind of topics we get and we can talk about that stuff too that way you guys can kind of interact with us a little bit 
So thanks again for listening. Make sure you guys like, subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell so you guys can be up to date whenever we drop a video. And good night.